Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wild Olive Trees. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit, and the precept that we are going to deal with today is by the grace of God. Sisters and brothers, there has been such a twisting in scriptures when it comes to grace, and it's only because people don't understand what grace is. Sisters and brothers, God's grace starts with when we sinned, and we're all sinners, and we've all fallen short of the grace of God, and we're going to read that. It starts that God gives us the opportunity, instead of killing us when we sin, to come to the knowledge of the truth so we can fulfill the purpose that we were created for, to fear him and to keep his commandments and to fellowship with him, to be his friend, to be his children. Man has twisted that around to the law's been done away with, the very thing that uh, designates us as God's people, the keeping of his law. Man has said that that whole law's been done away with because we're not under the law anymore, we're under grace. Well, what we're going to do today is by the grace of God, we are going to explain the grace of God. And we're going to start this off in Romans, the third chapter. Romans 3. And Brother Mike, if you would start off this lesson for us in verse 23, whenever you're ready, brother, go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As one teacher says that all is absolute. Let's go over to the sixth chapter of Romans. Romans 6. Romans 6. And verse 23, brother. 6 and 23. Go ahead. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages for sin is death. When you sin, you should die. God says in his word, when you sin, the day you sin, you shall die. He says those that sin will be cut off from his people. And we've all sinned, and the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we should all be sent. All those sinners, we're all sinners. We should all be dead. But it's only by the grace of God that we're not. Let's go skip back to the uh, verse 14 and read 14, brother. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you. In other words, you're not sinning. Sin shall not have dominion over you means you're not sinning. Let's go to Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Isaiah, the 64th chapter. And we are coming right back to Romans. Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, and this is the need for grace. Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Isaiah 64 and one verse, brother, verse 6. 64 and 6. Go ahead. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. We are all an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. We are so dirty that the Father can't even deal with us. He's so pure and righteous. He doesn't even deal with us. Our prayers don't go to him. They go through our Savior, our Messiah, Christ Jesus, our high priest. Our Heavenly Father won't even go near us. We're so filthy. When he looks down and it's time for judgment, he's going to look down and he's going to see who's come under the shed blood of his son. And then he's going to see those that didn't. He's not looking at us because our righteousness can't gain us anything. The only thing our righteousness can gain us is death. Because the wages of sin is death. Let's go back to Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, this time the sixth chapter. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Romans 6 and verse 11. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's grace. 
that's grace right there. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace allows us to come to Christ Jesus. You can't come to Christ Jesus filthy in sin. You have to repent from that and turn from that, and coming to Christ is becoming obedient to his word. Becoming obedient to the gospel of Christ Jesus, that is the spirit of prophecy. What was written in Moses and the prophets, given to Moses by Christ Jesus. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Because that's before we come to Christ, that's how we used to live. And all our lust, whatever made us feel good, didn't matter what God had written. Didn't matter what God said. We created our own doctrines. We created our own gods. We make ourselves feel good, warm and fuzzy. We repent from all that false doctrine and we come to Christ. And the only way we have the opportunity to do that is through God's grace. Because when he should have killed us, he didn't. And he gave us the opportunity to find out how to serve him. Go ahead and continue, brother. 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Go ahead, brother. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. When you're keeping the law, the law has no effect on you. There is no punishment for keeping the law. So you are not under the law, but you are under grace because God should have killed you and didn't and gave you the opportunity to learn the law so you wouldn't be under the law. Go ahead and continue, brother. 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. What is sin? It's the transgression or the breaking of God's commandments. Mm -hmm. We should have died for that. God didn't kill us, gave us an opportunity to come to him, to learn how to serve him. So should we continue in the ways that gave us the death sentence? God forbid. Go ahead, brother. 16. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. It all comes down to a choice. You either serve God or you don't. You take hold of his covenant or you don't. And you are servants to whom you obey. So if you're not obeying God through his word, you're not his servant and you have no part of him. Go ahead and continue, brother. 17, but God be thanked that ye were of the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. One more verse. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. See, God be thanked that when ye were the servants of sin, when God should have killed you, but he shed his grace upon you and let you live to discover how to serve him, that you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine that was delivered to you, that doctrine of Christ Jesus, that the Father gave to the Son to give to man for redemption. Mm -hmm. Being then made free from sin through obedience to Christ, you became the servants of righteousness. Go to Romans, the first chapter, brother, and we're going to read one verse, verse 17. Romans 1. And verse 17, when you get there, go ahead, brother. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from belief to belief, as it is written, the just shall live by belief. If you believe in the gospel of Christ Jesus, you do what Christ Jesus said. 
You take hold of the covenant, which starts with the Ten Commandments, and then you prove all things. And everything you see that the Lord said to do, you do. And everything you see that looks like it's shady, you stay away from. You prove all things, and you abstain from all appearance of evil. You hold fast to the things that are good. And the things that are good and righteous is God's commandments. Let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians, the third chapter. The just shall live by their faith or by their belief. Galatians 3. Brother, let's read 11 and 12. 3 and 11. Go ahead. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. The just shall live by faith. This has a lot deeper meaning. This is going into animal sacrifices and everything else. But the point of it is there's no works that you can do. It's your belief and obedience to Christ Jesus that defines your righteousness. Go ahead and continue. Or did you finish that, brother? Uh, that was the end of 11. 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. And the law... Is not a faith. That's right. But the man that doeth them, that keeps the law, shall live in them. So he's living in his faith. If you're not keeping the law and you're breaking the law because you believe that's cool and that's all well to go against God's holy word, you're still walking and living in your faith. Only it's not the gospel of Christ Jesus. It's not the one shepherd, the one spirit. That's why we're commanded to prove all things. Let's go to Habakkuk, the second chapter, brother. Little prophet toward the end of the Old Testament, Habakkuk. A couple books before Zechariah and one book after Nahum. And I know this because I put my marker in before the study started. Uh. Habakkuk, the second chapter. One verse, brother, verse four. Go ahead. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith, by his belief. Last place, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 38, brother, and we'll just read right through to 11. 10 and 38. Go ahead, brother. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But just shall live by faith or belief. But we don't draw back. We continue to prove all things and we continue to press forward because we're running a race. Go ahead, brother. But we are not of them who perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul but we are not of them who draw back into perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the souls sisters and brothers when adam and eve sinned in the garden that brought a death sentence upon all mankind and the only way to lift that death sentence is to take advantage of god's grace and his mercy because God's grace started when we sinned, he didn't kill us. He gave us the opportunity to come to him. And then his mercy is once we see how to walk, we repent and we get baptized in Jesus' name. And then we continue to prove his word and we continue to grow in grace. And we continue to move forward to the savings of our souls. We don't fall back to perdition or to destruction. God's grace starts with not killing us when we sin, and it goes all the way to the raising and resurrecting of our Messiah, making atonement for our sins. And the only way to reverse our death sentence is to come under that shed blood of Christ Jesus and live in our faith because of his grace, the faith in his doctrine, in the gospel of Christ, the keeping of his commandments. For sisters and brothers, we appreciate the opportunity to rightly divide God's word, and we hope that you got something from these scriptures.